And there's a few ways we can simplify radicals. I'm going to go ahead and do it a, probably a couple different ways, depending on which way is easier on the problem. Um, radicals just mean square roots, but also they could be fourth roots, like you see in number two. So the idea is that we would like to take out anything that is a perfect square, like we're factoring out a greatest common factor. And so what I, I'm going to do is I'm going to use the, the fact that I can multiply two square roots together. So 80 is kind of like writing 16 and 5. 80 is the same as 16 times 5. So the square root of 80 is the same as the square root of 16 times 5. The square root of 16 times 5 is the same as the square root of 16 times the square root of 5. And do you know that the square root of 16 is just 4? What's the square root of 5? Well, it's just square root of 5. And we're done. So it's pretty quick if we know, if we can p pull out a perfect square just like that. Now, the next one, it also has the number 16 that we could pull right out. But this time, it's not perfect squares we're dealing with. 16 times 2. We're actually dealing with fourth roots. Now, the fourth root of 16 is still a whole number. It's actually just 2. And then we have the fourth root of 2. To show you a little bit more detail on number 3, what I'm going to do is, before I start this problem, I'm going to do my triples or my cubes. Okay, So we have 3. So 1 cubed is 1. Uh, 2 cubed is 8. 3 cubed is 3 times 3 times 3, so that's 27. 4 cubed is 64. Okay, so I've gone too far, right? So what I want to know, are there any of those that I can take out of 54? And so the answer is going to be 27 times 2. So 27 times 2 would be another way to do that. But what we can do is then say the cube root of 27 and the cube root of 2. The cube root of 27 is... Well, now we can clearly see it's 3, and the cube root of 2 is just cube root of 2. So we have simplified it. It doesn't mean it looks pretty. That just means we've made the numbers inside the radical as small as possible. The next one's written a little bit differently. We do have a square root on the bottom of a fraction, and that's a problem. We have something that's called an irrational denominator. So what we're going to do is the first thing I'm going to do, the very first thing, is I'm going to get rid of the 8 in the denominator by multiplying by the same thing on top and bottom because when you multiply by the same thing on top and bottom, you're multiplying by 1. And so it doesn't change the fraction. And I get 3 square root of 8 over square root of 64. Now, square root of 64 is really just, well, 8, right? Now, 3 square root of 8... That's the same as saying 3 square root of 4 times square root of 2. So this is really saying 3 times the 2 times the square root of 2 all over 8. And then I'm going to take an, a 2 out of the top and bottom. So I'm switching colors just so you can see that real quick because some people will miss this. 2 and 8 becomes 3 square root 2 over 4. All right, let's look at the next one. The next one actually doesn't have a square root in the denominator. It's got a whole, whole square root. The whole thing is a square root. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the square root of the top and the square root of the bottom. So that's going to be square root of 4 over the square root of 75. The square root of 4 is just 2, but the square root of 75, that's like the square root of 25 times the square root of 3. Or we could just say that's 2 over 5 square root 3. Now, just like the last one, we have a square root on the bottom. And so we have a problem. And we're going to multiply by something on the top and bottom to get rid of it. Now, at first glance, you might say, well, let's multiply by 5 square root 3, because last time we multiplied by the square root of 8. But we actually don't need to multiply by the 5, just the square root of 3. And if we do that we end up with 
2 square root 3 over 5 square root 9. And square root 9 is just 3. So this whole thing just ends up being 15. One last problem for you. This time we have two radicals that are multiplied together. There's a couple ways we can do this. I'm going to start by just combining everything and combining underneath the radicals. So I have 4 and then square root of 3 times 21. Because just like we pulled them apart in one of the previous problems, we can put them back together. 3 times 21, I can rewrite that as 63. 63, 63, 63. If I think about my perfect squares and I say, what is the largest perfect square that goes into 63? Um, I could do square root of 9 times square root of 7. And so this ends up being 4 times the 3, the square root of 9, times the square root of 7, or just 12 root 7. 4 times 3 is 12. All right, so that's where I'm going to leave you today on simplifying, simplifying radicals.